Yes, I have been in Fatima. When I was still a priest, I used to come quite often um, to offer a service at uh, the sanctuary uh, as a confessor. And although I, I used to come to offer a service, when I look back, I firmly believe that I received a lot. No, because even listening and hearing the confessions of my brothers and sisters for me is a lesson. Yes, the, the, the synod or better still synodality because <laughs> yesterday I, 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 I think I remarked this there can be a synod without a synodality. And there can be synodality without a synod. Although synodality demands uh, certain structures, how we can put into uh, concrete uh, reality uh, the concept of synodality. So yes, synodality and the, ch and the church are you are saying the same thing, because by nature, uh, the church is synodal. By nature, the church is the people of God walking together, together trying to listen to the Holy Spirit and to discern God's will. After all, this is then our mission, to communicate to humanity the will of God. I think what we have to do is to revisit Vatican Council II. We are not inventing anything by proposing synodality to the Church. All we are doing is that we are going back to the documents uh, of Vatican II and try to continue to implement them. Because there was, we must acknowledge now, that there has been a, a sort of implementation. But obviously, that was not enough. For example, if we are talking about synodality, we will be surely revisiting the, it's called constitution, uh, Lumen Gentium, uh, that uh, speaks highly of the people of God, the hierarchy, the interrelation between the people of God, the laity, and the, the, the hierarchy. We are revisiting the document on the Word of God, because even synodality, synodality does not mean that we just meet and, and talk, but we meet to discern the will of God by listening to the Word of God also as interpreted in tradition in the Church. We are visiting, um, well, the document about uh, the bishops, for example, no? Because again, even the Episcopal ministry um, needs more reflection in depth because the ministry of a bishop in a synodal church, a synodal bishop has things to, to learn and also to change. So in other words, uh, the invitation that Pope Francis is making to the whole church to be more synodal, he is asking us to go back to Vatican II. Or, to be more precise, to go to the Acts of the Apostles, because um, the first uh, traits of a synodal church, we can find it also in the Acts of the Apostles. Well, we are, I think we are um, in a process of conversion, no? This is something um, uh, close to the heart of Pope Francis. He is continuously um, inviting the people of God to do various forms of conversions, pastoral conversion, ecological conversion, uh, and even a synodal conversion. So if you tell me that uh, 
presently in the church, there are things that cannot be understood, no? or do not really reflect the spirit of the gospel and the right spirit of what the church should be, for me, that's understandable. But it means that now it is the moment that we stop, reflect, and take decisions so that we can really put into effect the reform that Vatican Council really proposed. First of all, I beg to differ. I mean that even this category of, of people who are living in what we can call the existential periphery, they do have a voice. They do have voice. It's another thing whether that voice is being listened to, no? But they, yes, they do have a voice and the Church, the Holy Father insists that we must listen to them. So much so that at one point we were considering of holding an ecclesial assembly for the Continental Synod. And the Holy Father made this remark. He said, pay attention. Don't listen only to the elite in the church, but listen also to those in the periphery. Listen to the poor, because the poor are the presence of Christ even in society. They are the presence of the church in society. So it would be really a big, big mistake if we do not lend an ear to this category uh, in the people of God. I take it takes two to tango, no? So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would say that both parts have things to do. Both uh, the church as an institution needs to appreciate more what women are delivering even today to the church. I proudly say that I am here because in my life I met good women you know, that proclaimed to me the gospel. The first people who really evangelized me you know, were not priests, but were women. I mean, my catechists were women. The, the persons who were responsible for Catholic action, for the Legion of Mary, because I, I was part of these <coughs> associations, were women. So uh, I am indebted to, 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 to women. Obviously, uh, we must not only acknowledge what uh, women are already uh, delivering to the church, but yes, I believe that we must create more space for women not only to do things, as you underlined, but also to reflect. For example, in theology, I would like to see more participation, I mean, in the theological reflection, um, by women. Because one thing, reflection is carried out by a male, and one thing, the reading, the theological reading, is carried out by a woman. But obviously, um, this is a topic that needs more reflection and action in the church. If uh, youth you know, are absent in our communities, then our communities unfortunately have no future. So we need the presence and the contribution of the young generation. We must trust them. <laughs> No, because it's really true that they are in some way beginners, no? They don't have experience, but that should not be a reason not to create space uh, for the young generation. After all, we must acknowledge that the reflection on synodality in the church had its kickstart at the synod about youth. I mean, if we go to read the uh, final document of the Senate uh, 
on you, no? we find paragraphs that speak about uh, synodality. And perhaps that was one of the reasons why uh, some years back, uh, forward, the Holy Father then decided to, uh, to propose synodality to the whole church. So synodality, yes, started from, let's put it this way, synodality started from the reflection, from the synodal reflection carried out uh, by youth and the reflection on youth. And if we want synodality to go to progress, we need to involve also the young generation. I fully agree with you. I mean, and this applies not only to connect with the young generation, but to, to connect with all. We need to speak from the heart, not only from the mind. Reflection is fundamental, but the way how this reflection is, is shared, is communicated, is experienced, yes, it has to go through one's heart. I really hope that uh, such a meeting will be a further contribution uh, in this synodal process. They will be um, convened together, they will be in a prayerful setting, they are here because they love Jesus and His Church, so yes, why not? They can also make a contribution, a valid contribution for the Church, so that the Church will never lose its young age.